the EverDrive GBX3 by Crix. This is a special Game Boy cartridge that allows you to easily put your own software onto an actual Game Boy using a micro SD card. It's similar to the R4 card for the Nintendo DS, if you're familiar with that. And like the R4 card, it allows you to use Game Gene codes without needing to carry around that bulky accessory. Why is this useful? It has a number of uses. My primary purpose was that I could run the software I'm writing on an actual Game Boy. Up until this point, I've been testing things on an emulator, which, while useful, is not the desired platform for the software. There's just something about that olive green screen that triggers nostalgia in me. This is also great for running other so-called homebrew games. There are some great ones out there, and they're mostly freely available. If you want to go down a less ethical road, which I cannot condone, and you should only play games you have a legal copy of, yes, you can play pirated games on this as well. But why would you? You can find pretty much any game you want on eBay for a reasonable price. And at 65 US dollars at the time I'm making this video, this thing isn't exactly cheap. But think it through logically. At the time of this video, some of these cartridges are 30 years old. They're not going to last forever. Many times the batteries inside them required for save games have been depleted or worse, corroded. This product allows you to still enjoy your legally obtained games further into the future. And finally, just stepping back into reality for a moment, it's the 21st century. Nobody wants to carry around a shoebox full of cartridges when they can fit the entire library on a card the size of their thumbnail. The X3 is the base model, which should be adequate for most users. It should function with 100% compatibility for nearly all Game Boy, Super Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Pocket games. The only shortcoming on this model is that it requires you reset the device before it records your save games to the card. So for example, if you're playing Mario Land 2 all day, it will not actually save your progress until you press the reset button on the cartridge. The X5 model does not have this limitation, but costs an extra $30, and I really can't justify that cost myself. The X7 model also supports a real-time clock, which is only used by a handful of games, as well as save states. The real-time clock is so that games can know how much time has passed even while the game is off, and save states are where you can restore your progress at any point in time, then resume for that point later on. I personally see this as cheating, and it's not something I typically do myself, though it certainly has a use in games that rely on a password save system rather than battery backup. Now that I've said as much as I can about this, let's take a look at it in depth. Wait a minute, X7? This is an X3! Did they put the wrong label on this and I got upgraded? Looking at the images on Crick's website, there should be a battery attached to it, which there clearly isn't. I'd wager it's the same PCB for each model, but they have additional component solder on to give it the extra functionality. There's a Phillips screw on the back that a curious individual could remove and take a look at, but eh, I'm not going to risk breaking this just in the name of curiosity. It has a spring-loaded microSD card slot on the top, and a reset button cleverly placed near the top of the cartridge underneath the plastic. Pressing in this vicinity while playing will trigger the Game Boy to reset itself. This button is accessible when using both the original Game Boy as well as the Game Boy Color. I don't have any other Game Boy playing devices right now to test with, but I imagine it should work similarly well on those also. I do wonder if, with enough abuse to the cartridge, this button would trigger on its own and disrupt gameplay. It doesn't come with its own case, which is a bummer, since I like to keep my carts in cases, but it wasn't difficult to locate another one. That's as much as there is to it physically, so now let's actually use it. First, find the lowest capacity microSD card you have laying around. Check for old cell phones. Jackpot. Sweet! Yes, Game Boy games really are this small. Now put it in your computer, format it to a FAT32 file system, a quick format is sufficient, and download the firmware from Crick's website. Extract it with the directory structure intact like this. Now you can copy your games onto the SD card as well. Eject the card from your computer, stick it in the cartridge, pop the cartridge in the Game Boy, turn it on, and wait for the magic to happen. You'll see the red light on the cartridge blinking while it reads the firmware image from the card, and it makes a little bit of noise on the speaker, at least in this early original model Game Boy that I'm using. Now we're at a menu. Just ignore the GBC sys directory, recall that's where the firmware is, and it's where the save games are going to end up. I don't believe it can be hidden on this menu, which is kind of unfortunate. Anyways, you can browse different directories with the up and down arrows and pressing the A button to enter into them. If you want to go back to the previous directory, press the B button. 
Also, in a directory with many files, use the left and right arrows to navigate by page. This makes navigating a lot faster. When you found the game you want to play, select it with the A button. Here you can just launch the game, or you can select Game Genie codes. Let's take a look at that for just a moment. The interface isn't as nice as on a Game Genie, but it's adequate. And you can run more than three codes at once, which is pretty cool. It also saves them even when powered off, so you don't have to keep entering that infinite lives code at the beginning of each session, you cheater. When you're done entering codes, you can start the game. It will reset to the scrolling Nintendo logo, then start the game you selected. And again, just to reiterate, on the X3 model, it will not save your progress until you hit the reset button on the back of the cartridge, so make sure you're in the habit of resetting before you turn it off. I've read that this thing draws more power than a conventional cartridge. I don't have any hard statistics on this. I was able to get about two weeks of moderate use, maybe 15 to 20 hours, out of set of rechargeable batteries, and that seemed adequate to me. The batteries actually didn't die on me until I was recording some footage for this video. When the power is low, though, you can definitely see it straining to read from the SD card. Overall, this device meets my needs of putting my own custom software onto a Game Boy, and then exceeds it by allowing me to put copies of the games I own onto it as well, plus the cheat code functionality. I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for a device of this nature. And this isn't a paid endorsement, I'm just a happy customer. You can purchase this direct from Crix, which ships from Ukraine and could take three weeks or longer to arrive, or you can order from a distributor located in your country. In my case, I was able to order from a stateside seller for the same price as going direct from a manufacturer and receive the item in just three days. They also make similar products for other classic consoles, and I'm sure that one day when I start developing my own Super Nintendo games, I'll be taking advantage of their Super EverDrive X5 product. I hope this video was informative and useful. If so, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe. See you next time!